Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for inviting me to join you today. And my apologies for not being able to attend in person. The Indo-Pacific region has made impressive progress to prevent and contain infectious diseases threats with the potential to cause social and economic harms on a national, regional or global scale. Strong political commitment for health and investments in health systems to enable economic growth and resilience has been a hallmark of these efforts. Even before the pandemic hit, there were a number of regional health security initiatives underway, notably the Indo-Pacific Center for Health Security, ASEAN Vaccine Security and Self-Reliance Initiative, and the APEC Health Agenda. The World Health Organization's recent decision to recommend the broad deployment of the RTSS vaccine, the first malaria vaccine ever to be licensed and receive such an endorsement, represents a truly historic moment in the fight against this ancient disease. With RTSS first developed ne nearly 35 years ago, and the search for a safe and effective malaria vaccine beginning more than a century ago, this marks the end of a very long journey. But it is also the beginning of an important new one, and an opportunity, particularly for the Indo-Pacific region, for RTSS to become just the first of a range of malaria vaccines that the world so desperately needs. We have seen considerable progress against malaria in the past 20 years thanks to sustained investments in increasing coverage of PHC services, especially to remote populations, and in strengthening surveillance systems and vector control, many countries in Asia Pacific, such as China and Sri Lanka, have gone several years with indigenous cases. But this progress has leveled off more recently, and several countries continue to face persistent malaria burden, such as in Papua New Guinea. In Asia, 2.5 billion people remain at risk of malaria, with rural and impoverished communities at the highest risk. With the emergence and rapid spread of drug and insecticide-resistant malaria strains, and the spread of the mosquito vectors due to climate change, this risk could only become more dire. Malaria currently kills more than 400,000 people a year. While this burden is felt predominantly in Africa, over 10,000 people, the majority children, still die of this highly preventable and treatable disease in Asia. And with around 238 million cases globally, the broader social and economic costs of this disease are huge. Previously, economists have estimated that malaria creates a gross penalty, slowing GDP as billions of dollars are lost due to health care costs and productivity loss. Therefore, the need for malaria vaccines to support existing preventative measures is huge. As the three large-scale national pilots have shown, when used in combination with other interventions, such as bed nets and anti-malarial medication, RTSS can be effective at reducing severe malaria by 30%. This means, if deployed widely, it has great potential to become an important additional tool to help accelerate progress in the control of this disease. Now we need to work out precisely what malaria vaccination programs should look like, how to integrate them into existing routine immunization programs, and how to deliver this vaccine in a way that really complements other malaria control interventions. It will also be critical for endemic countries to not only draw from the experience of Indo-Pacific countries, but also in the context of a vaccine, strike a careful balance in terms of how to best to allocate often their limited resources to achieve the greatest possible impact in malaria prevention. The fact that this landmark pilot has been carried out amidst an unprecedented global crisis is a testament to the leadership and commitment of the ministries of health of Ghana, Kenya and Malawi. Now need to build on this positive progress, making this a turning point. And one of the main reasons why malaria prevention has historically been underfunded 
is that it is a disease that largely affects the so-called global south. With the first vaccine against malaria now in our hands, the fight against malaria can be revitalized. This is an opportunity for governments in malaria endemic countries to recommit to the investments needed to control and eventually eliminate malaria. The Indo-Pacific region has an important role to play in ensuring the wide availability of malaria vaccines. Both RTSSS and next most advanced malaria vaccine in the pipeline, R21, will be produced by manufacturers in India. Asian manufacturers will be global leaders in advancing this key tool. As COVID-19 has shown, there is a need to increase global vaccine manufacturing capacity and to diversify manufacturing locations in order to increase supply security and strengthen local and regional access. With most of the falciparum malaria burden being in Africa, for example, it could make sense for future generations of malaria vaccine to have Africa-based supply chains. Looking even further to the future, this vaccine could be an entry point, especially for new and emerging economies, to build an R&D pipeline for vaccines against other types of malaria, including those which dominate in Asia, such as Vivax, and potentially even vaccines that could bring us closer to elimination goals. For now, the focus is on how we can best use this safe and effective new tool, RTSS, together with the Global Fund and UNITAID, Gavi has already committed over 70 million US dollars to fund this large scale pilot to answer outstanding questions relating to the feasibility of this vaccine. When and if we see more Valerian vaccines, we'll already have a proof of concept for implementation that could smooth the way to further deployment. Now, following the positive findings of this pilot and WHO's recommendation, Gavi will consider the future financing of a new malaria vaccination program for countries Gavi supports with high burdens of the disease. Because, as I said, this is not the end, but a new beginning, and one that can change the narrative of this terrible disease for millions of the most vulnerable people in the world. I thank you for your attention.